Wilfred Emmanuel Jones claims to be the UK's only black farmer. I'm the black farmer, darling. And he believes the British countryside is far too white. Don't run away from the black farmer, sweetener. But he's on a mission to change all that. He has brought nine black city kids to live on his Devonshire farm. In five weeks, he hopes to transform them into modern day farmers. I'm putting my hand up, no one's biting. I'm feeling the cow's tip. If they make it through the hard graft and tough discipline. I kept telling everybody that this week was going to be hard and difficult. And mingling with the locals. Let's have a chain gang. You're not slaves, mate. <laughs> At the end, Wilfred will be offering the two best candidates the chance of a lifetime, a job in his food and farming empire. The first person that will be getting a job is... But will these nine city kids be able to hack it as young black farmers in Devon, Britain's whitest county? It's crunch time for the young black farmers. With only two weeks left on the Black Farmer Scholarship, the race to find the two best recruits is on. Last week, they went from nine to eight, when Wilfred sent 21-year-old Jason home. You're out. I'm out. You're out. And 17-year-old ex-drug dealer Chantel was almost kicked off the scholarship. I'm not coming there for that bullshit, yeah? He's a black man, yeah, and he should know how shit feels, yeah? While the rest of the group bonded, Cyrus, who's always dreamt of becoming a farmer, struggled to fit in. I'd like to be able to like, interact better with him and stuff, but I just can't. Just a sad loner. And tractor driving provided 17-year-old Wayne, who spent his life in care, with his first real qualification. It's going to be on my wall framed. I know, say, this is going to boost my confidence in, like, doing stuff. But which of the remaining eight recruits has what it takes to get a job with Wilfred? These last two weeks are crucial, and Wilfred will be putting the young black farmers through their toughest tests yet. I want people who are passionate, really, and who really sees, the, sees this as a big opportunity and they're prepared to fight for it, absolutely fight for it. In two weeks' time, it's the most important event on the local calendar, the Launceston Show. For Wilfred, it's critical that the recruits make their mark at this all-important event. For the scholars, it's their last chance to convince both Wilfred and the mainly white county what they're capable of. Cow showing is one of the most competitive events at the show, and Wilfred wants to see if any of his scholars have what it takes to bring home a prize. Hello, gang, everybody. What I want you to do is go in and catch yourself a heifer. Go in. Pick a heifer. Oh, <laughs> Dawn and Pam Corrin have more rosettes for their prize-winning cattle than anyone in the area. Today, they're going to choose just one scholar to enter the Launceston show. Yeah, just stand to the side, because it's a bit like if you stand square onto something, it seems aggressive. Oh, that's hey! that's the oh, right. Charge! Charge! Just like a dog show, Cow showing is all about presenting your animal in the best way. This means learning to make the cow stand, walk and stop on command. Creamy, head up further, mate. Up. That's it. Excellent. Ready? Pull. And keep your head up. Head up. Oh, no, it's, it's, oh my God. That's right, it's right. No, can you come and take the cow? No, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Ready? Come on, let's go. Yes, head up. No, don't fuck. Come on, head up. Oh, yes. Please, miss. Please. This is what you'll be doing at Launceston Show. You'll be going around in a circle. Going really well. So far, it looks like 20-year-old Shanice from East London is a natural, and Chantelle is a close second. Shanice, right from the start, showed a lot of aptitude with the stock, she wasn't afraid of them. She was first in to get the bucket, let's get my calf caught. Come on, go back. Go back. Oh, it's a good cow. Well done, calves, and well done, girls. See? Bye. Pam and Dawn have selected whom they're going to train for the upcoming show. Shanice was extremely good. Thank you. Yes. I think mission accomplished, opportunity seized. 
So there we are. Brilliant. <laughs> Cow fed up. <laughs> Shanice is thrilled. She's loving life in the countryside, and success like this impresses Wilfred and should improve her chances in the competition for a job. This is a beautiful place to be in. I'm very happy to be here. Like, it's kind of shocking as well like, to think that like, a couple of weeks ago I was sat in Hackney, and now I'm here. Wilfred's scholarship is a world away from her life in East London. Unemployed Shanice is a survivor who's grown up without her mum or her dad. I think that my whole childhood just got stolen from me. It's like I've had to grow up overnight, like from the age of seven, pressure. That's all I can say. I've been hit with pressure from a young age. One of those pressures was her difficult relationship with her dad and the tattoos she's had since she was 16 are symbols of the pain he left her with. First time I got was of the bear on my leg. I got that when I was 16 to represent my emotional inner strength. Like I feel that emotionally I'm as strong as a bear because what I've been through. Shanice is desperately looking for something positive in her life and she hopes the scholarship will be just what she's searching for. I need a drive, a reason to be here type of thing. But competition is tough and like all of the recruits, Shanice is going to have to fight for one of Wilfred's jobs. I come here to get a job for myself. It sounds selfish, but that's what we all come here for. We all come here to get that job, so I'm still looking that job. I don't feel like I'm in the running, so I just feel like I need to push myself like a little bit extra. I don't want this experience to end. Like I said before, that I do really want the job from Wilfred so I can better my lifestyle, better my life. The decision that I'm going to make in 10 days' time could affect the rest of their lives. It's quite a big decision, really. Christ, I thank God I've got 10 more days to make my decision because, you know, if you ask me now who I'd give the two jobs to, I wouldn't have a clue. There's only 10 days left on the Black Farmer Scholarship. With Shanice already signed up for cow showing at the Launceston Show, horse riding is next on the list. Wilfred wants the recruits to make their mark at this all-important local event. What is this? The aim today is to find one recruit good enough to compete in a riding event at the show. But it won't be easy, as most of them have never ridden before. This is the end. Andy Reeve, an ex-show jumper who owns the local stables, has the unenviable task of choosing and training one of the eight. We've got a couple of weeks, if that, all right? And I've got to teach you to walk, trot, canter and gallop. When you gallop, you're galloping at 35 miles an hour. And when it does go, it's got a power behind it of 52 tonnes per square inch. So we've got our work cut out. Come on, keep going! Kick, kick, kick! More action! 
action. Now get some fire out the saddle. Up, up. Good lad. Go on. Go. Go on. Up, up, up. Gently. Don't keep hitting because you go faster. You don't get any faster. You can get out the saddle, yeah? Andy has a theory, and he thinks it might help him win the Launceston show. Afro-Caribbeans have fantastic rhythm. Far better rhythm than any Caucasian person. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, yeah! <laughs> Andy has his eye on 21-year-old Bobby from Peckham in London, who he thinks has real promise. Kick him again. Good. Bottom out. Go on, good boy. Go on, you're doing fine. Bobby's actually got on the horse and got a good position, though he's never done really any riding whatsoever. And I think Bobby tried his heart out.